can ask your state your name, where you're from, and then give that information about your branch of the service and your rank. And okay, I, I'm Ted Russell from um, Mohawk, New York, and I was in the U.S. Army for approximately five years. Uh, I was in a couple of divisions, the 29th Division for a year and a half, and the f that's the Virginia uh, National Guard, really, is what it was. And then I was in the 487th Port Battalion in Europe, uh, which was part of the 5th Engineer Brigade that uh, took part in the Omaha Beach uh, landings on D-Day and June 6th. Um, okay. Tell us, why don't you, Jeff, I know you can go through the whole thing. Why don't you tell us about June 6th? And uh, you can get right into that, because I presume that's one of your longer stories. Okay, well, um, I, w I was, uh, maybe I better start at the beginning. I was in um, senior year at Middlebury College over in Vermont. I took the pre-med course, and the dean called me in. He said, they're going to need doctors. So he says, I'm setting you up with Tufts Medical School in Boston, and you're to start taking the courses now. Well, December 7th came. Um, we were pacifists before on December 6th, but after that Pearl Harbor thing, we were all ready to go in. And we just uh, exited that school. Every man that I know of wanted to get in as, you know, as fast as they could. So I went to Fort Devens, and um, they assigned me to uh, Fort Meade, Maryland. And that was the 29th Division's main base. Uh, then they assigned us to Washington, D.C., and we were there for guard duty. And we guarded everything from Arlington Cemetery to the... Uh, water system and to the buildings and the Senate and the House of Representatives and all that, and the White House. And we did duty there for, I was approximately 10 months. But I got selected for uh, the President's Guard, and uh, President Roosevelt. And um, we went out every time he went. And we had one interesting thing. Uh, I thought it was very uh, mountaintop experience for me. Uh, we were called out at 2 o'clock in the morning for President Roosevelt, the National Theater. And we put a cord on the soldiers around. About uh, 2.30, they brought him up and carried him up this staircase into the second balcony. And then he called us in, and we sat with him with the general staff, and General Marshall and Leahy and all these guys, and us 20 fellas. And the house lights went down, and uh, a light, a light floodlight went on, and Irving Berlin stepped out of the stage. <clears throat> and he said, a special performance of This is the Army for the President of the United States. Well, every time they did a number, the President laughed. They did it over again. We get out of there about 4 in the morning. And it was a mountaintop experience for me. But anyway, um, I, 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 that wasn't to be long, because the, the colonel asked me, he says, I want you to go to infantry school at Fort Benning, Georgia. So I went, and I hated to leave that Washington scene. But anyway, I got out of there, and they sent me to England. And. Uh, I joined this 487th Port Battalion, and we got ready for the invasion. We didn't know we were getting ready for it, I guess, but we were. And we, we had, off the, off the south coast of England, we practiced with our amphibious vehicles. We set up a school for the, uh, the new duck vehicle that we were using, and um, put several of the division leaders through that. So June 5th came, and we get on our boats. I was on an ammunition boat. It was a coastwise British thing, uh, sort of a tub it was, <laughs> but uh, loaded with ammunition. And we slept on a deck 
our platoon did. And June 5th, uh, in the middle of the night, they called us and they said, uh, we canceled. Eisenhower canceled the invasion. So we just lay around on deck all day and waited for the, um, uh, the new orders. And June 6th, they said, you're ready to go. So we sailed out of there in the dark and approached the French coast. And um, 4,000 ships in the Armada, you can imagine that uh, none of us were hit. Our C Company ship had a sea mine blow, blow the bow off the ship, but nobody was hurt. And uh, we pulled in within three, 400 yards of the beach. And by that time in the morning, we were supposed to be on the beach at H plus three. That means three hours after the landing. But <clears throat> we didn't get in there till nightfall because there was a tremendous battle there. We had the 1st Division on the left, 29th Division right in front of us, which I had been in in Washington, which was interesting, and I knew some of the guys. And they had a battle there and, and lost 2,200 men. It was uh, one of the bloodiest battles, I guess, the, the United States has been involved in. Nobody could do anything. The tide came in and people got drowned. It couldn't move and the medics couldn't get to them. And it was chaos for about 10 hours. But finally, um, our colonel got on the beach and started setting up things. And we started moving with these GMC ducks moving the supplies from the ships uh, into the beach. And uh, we just did that. Uh, well, some of us were up three days and three nights on our feet the whole time. It was uh, kind of crazy, the whole thing. Um, on the beach itself, there w it was just drudgery from then on after the, you know, the German enemy was dispersed. Um, can't think of other things that may be of interest to you. Once you, you, you said there was Can three days. pause for just a second? Sure. I just want to check. I looked off for some reason. Yeah. And Michael Brown. Three days and three nights. Hmm. What did you do? You moved in inland to, to clear out the Germans? Did you go through the towns? What did you do? Aaron? No, uh, our, uh, our principal job was amphibious landings. That's what we were trained right, in. Right, right. And once we got everybody on shore and all the supplies there, yeah. our job was literally done. Okay. But the, the troops went up into the hedgerows above the beach okay. and headed for St. Lo. And there was quite a battle there with the 29th Division. And then they caught the Germans in the Falaise Gap, which was that place between St. Lo and Paris. Right, right. And they got them in there, and it was uh, captured thousands and thousands of them. I was reading about mm -hmm. that. I was, I was trying to go to get the history so I could see for myself what that yeah. the, uh, chronology was. Mm -hmm. it was uh, it's so complicated. That's what struck me. Yeah, yeah. How complex it was. Well, at the same time as those landings, the British landed uh, about 10 miles up the beach at Caen. And the, um, at Utah Beach was at the Cherbourg Peninsula at the base. Carentan was the name of the place. And they secured that, you know, Cherbourg was at the end there. So uh, all three of those uh, caused the demise of the Germans. The reason Omaha Beach was tough was that there was a Hermann Goering division of soldiers there on maneuvers, not knowing there would be a landing. But that gave them quite an impetus because a lot of soldiers were there that we didn't know were there. So. How did okay. you, with, with such an awful scene in front of you and the work that you had to do, how did you cope with that? Well, uh, I think the, the adrenaline was up on all of us, of course. And we had a good feeling for the, the war. We thought we were, you know, ridding the world of this 
Nazi machine. And that was in our minds all the time. Uh, not like some of these recent wars, you know. So I guess that's what kept us going. And, um, what about friendships that you formed in the service? Well, um, I still keep up with some of them. Um, it's very close, of course, when you're in a situation like that, far from home. And um, your buddy is about the closest thing to you. Um, lots of things there. Now, how old were you when you went in? Uh, 21. You 41, 21, I was. You said you were for five years. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about home. Who was home waiting for you or praying for you or thinking of you? <laughs> well, my father, uh, my mother had died when I was seven. We lived in Norwalk, Connecticut. And my father was a commuter to New York every day. He was an organic chemist. And um, my brother was a... Harvard, he was assistant professor of music there. And he had been in the Pacific and came back before I went to England. He'd been in Guadalcanal. So um, those were the three main people. And we actually met in New York and my father gave us the key to the house and we went our different ways. It was funny, you know. We didn't have any women folks take care of us. <laughs> to manage just by. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about your uh, homecoming? Can you tell me about your homecoming? You know, what did you do once you got back there? I, uh, I'd like to just uh, interject one thing. Mm -hmm. When we left the beach, they sent us with Montgomery's 21st Army Group in the north of France mm -hmm. and uh, in the Belgian area, the Low Countries. And we ended up in Antwerp, Belgium, and freed up the docks and all that, and started bringing supplies in. And uh, the only thing that held us up there was the Battle of the Bulge, which was a few miles up the road. And <clears throat> we stayed on the docks, moving this equipment, as we had learned on the beach, you know. And uh, the only bad thing there, we lost more men there than we did on the beach. The Germans would um, set off these rockets, the V2 rockets, with a ton of explosive in the nose. And these things would land all over the place, about a, every minute and a half in the, into the city. And uh, they'd send a buzz bomb over, which was sort of a small airplane drone. It still had a ton of explosive in it. And that would uh, come down after it ran out of fuel at the appointed place. And uh, that was uh, very annoying. And uh, it hit our motor pool and we lost 35 men. And uh, it hit our barracks and uh, knocked all the windows and doors out of the place. And uh, then it, a V-2 rocket hit the theater the Rex Theater. And I remember I went on the job down there cleaning out the people. We had 890 bodies when I left the job. And we put them in the zoo, on the floor of the zoo, and the people would come by and try to identify their loved ones, you know. And that was a traumatic situation. And after Antwerp, we, we went up with Montgomery's group Ended up in Bremen on the North Sea. And uh, there we uh, intercepted ships coming back, German ships. And we took the crews, put them in a stockade, and uh, commandeered the ships. And there was one ship there, the Europa, was a famous cruise liner. And uh, we welded 10,000 beds in that thing. And uh, so that 10,000 soldiers could come home. But after two trips, it burned to the ground of the harv. 
burn. <laughs> I don't know why. It wasn't us. <laughs> we didn't do anything. But that was the end of, and finally they sent us to Marseille and sent us home. So that was my career, five years. So, and you asked another question. Well, I, I asked about your homecomings that they sent you home. Yeah, um, that was a very happy time, and the people were great. Uh, people in the United States just welcomed us with open arms, and unlike the Vietnam War, you know. And um, I appreciated all that, and we felt fulfilled that we had done our job, and, and that was it. And my father says, I suppose you want to go back to medical school? I said, no. And it, the thing affected me a little bit, the war. And I couldn't see the inhuman waste of everything. And I didn't want to go back to medical school. And I walked in the National Office of the Boy Scouts and asked for a job. And uh, they gave me a job, and I never regretted it. I was with them 42 years. And uh, that was my career. So. I, I you said that it changed, it changed you a lot. I, I know, I can't imagine that it wouldn't. Uh, what did you find that you did differently? How did you, how, how were you different? Well, I think I, I went in as a kid, you know. I, I was a skier up Middlebury and I was doing all that stuff, you know. And, um, it sobered you up, there's no doubt about it. I came back a different person, a um, little more concerned about the world and what's in it. Uh, what do you think is, uh, is important to say now to young people who are doing this project? And there's got to be some reason you agreed to do it. <laughs> And uh, what would you say the, the, the purpose then would be? Can I ask you to do something, though? I'm going to ask you to drop your hands down, because well, that, might be, that show it, it might be making a little noise with oh. your phone or something. Okay. So, um, so uh, what about what the purpose for passing this on now? Well, I have a good, uh, very strong feeling that uh, we've got to support our country. And we're the largest and best and freest country in the world, you know. And I uh, also want to say something about scouting. All the way through scouting helped me a great deal. And uh, I was a uh, camp director and a waterfront director. And <laughs> during the invasion, when before we got started on the south coast, the colonel says, can anybody teach these guys to swim that can't swim? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I can do it. So I had them on the beach learning about water, you know, and I uh, went in good there. When I got to the beach, I had, I'd build log cabins. I, that's my hobby. And um, the colonel said, uh, I think we need a pavilion or something. They say there's some USO troops coming or something. So uh, we got wood off the beach and made this thing covered with canvas and all. It held about a thousand soldiers. And uh, the first one in there was Bob Hope and Francis Langford with the troop. It was about two weeks after the landings. And that was a big time for us. So that I learned that stuff in scouting and so I recommend it to any boy or, or girl today. Bob Hope's 100th birthday. I noticed that in the paper this yes, morning. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I, I marveled at, at how many wars he had been through and, and gone to uh, entertain the troops. Oh, yeah. Every year at Christmas he was there. Yeah. So. You said that um, you didn't talk much about this for years. You were yeah. I, I always felt that, you know, this past and... Some of it's inconceivable to anybody, to, you know. To, and we like to talk amongst our buddies about it, you know, the Legion and wherever we go. But um, I don't know, I just, 
I talked to Rotary once, and that was all about it. I guess. If you had something to say to young people right now, to the children, you know, my children need to know about it. People even from my generation and others need to know things. What do you think they need to know the most? What would you want to leave them with? Well, I have to get back to my scouting um, roots. Uh, I would say get out and, and do things and enjoy nature if you can. This virtual reality stuff's okay. You can watch it and you can play the games, but it's not like the real thing of getting out, and being physically fit and enjoying. So I'd say that's my, I followed that all my career. And it helps you in your, in your war effort. Yeah, yeah, it does. And uh, nothing in there really bothered me that much. A lot of the men were homesick and all sorts of things. So. Did you keep contact during the war at all? Did you get letters and things like that? Some people were getting them. Yeah, I did. Um, there were some guys in my old scout troop. The one of them landed in Normandy. He was a signalman and from Norwalk, where I lived. And he was putting up poles and climbing, and a sniper killed him. And I didn't learn that for about a month. And then another guy I was the roommate up at college with was a um, fighter pilot with the 8th Air Force. And he had been shot down the Pacific a year before and uh, recovered at Westover Field in Massachusetts and then um, was strafing a train in Normandy there. And uh, the Germans shot him down, crashed into the train. Uh, so he was one of my best friends. So he, when we were in England, he uh, brought us, he, he flew these P-47s, <laughs> noisy thing, and he came right over our uh, camp. And the colonel called me and he says, what was that plane? He says, I said, it was my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he came from the air, air base near London and zeroed in on our camp. And the colonel didn't like it. Something to laugh about <coughs> now. Though, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, when you were mm -hmm. in the war, did you have any sense of what people were doing at home? Did you hear about what they were doing for the war effort or anything? Or did you not? Uh, we didn't get papers or anything, but uh, radio was the main thing. We listened to Axis Sally telling us about the enemy, and we'd listen at night to that. And then we listened to the main, uh, BBC mostly, and uh, got our news that way. We also had the uh, magazine or the paper that uh, was written. We got that every couple of days. So that was the way we did it. We used uh, V-mail, these things, you know. and uh, uh, Sometimes the phone, they would allow. But I, I got kind of burnt with that. I called my father once in New York from Switzerland. I was taking a rest camp for two weeks. The colonel sent me to Switzerland. And I decided to call him. But the call didn't get through except that he knew it was me. And, or he knew it was somebody in Europe. And boy, he got nervous. And uh, so I stopped doing that. I never called again. So that was, that was that. I'm sure that was scary for him. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 And, uh, one of the things that <clears throat> I've noticed about talking to people is that they didn't realize necessarily what was going on back home, things like rationing or the people going into the factories and working in them for the war effort, that type of thing. We wonder if there was any sense of hometown in what was happening, but there was a time. <sighs> yeah, I... Uh, well, a, a boat came in the dock at Antwerp one day, and a guy peeped out of a 
porthole there and said, hey, Russell, what are you doing? And I said, Doc, <laughs> this is a guy in my class in high school that was uh, in the Merchant Marine. And, uh, he took some stuff home for my father in New York and gave it to him in New York. A pair of binoculars and some other things I acquired. So that was fun. Um, Some people say the best of times and the worst of times. Do you agree or disagree with that? Yeah, I, I'm no philosopher or anything, but uh, they kept talking about the war to end all wars and all this stuff, and uh, I don't think it's in the human psyche to do that. We just seem to have one after the other. So I've kind of resigned myself to that fate. We've got to protect ourselves. That's all there is to it. What, what did you find when you were there? What did you think was the most victorious thing for you when you talked about these experiences? What, you know, when you got done, what did you get done with and say that, that made a difference? Well, it was some things there. Some, I remember when Roosevelt died in 45, I was in Antwerp working on some of those bombings. And the people cried in the streets. It's a strange thing. They just loved the man there. And uh, that affected me. Because I felt the same way about him, too. And uh, Even though I was a Republican, he was a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was a great leader for us. We liked all our commanders. Eisenhower spoke to us before we got on the boats to go on the, went up and down the lines and talked to every one of us. So we liked him. I guess the fact that that we stamped out the whole thing was important to me. I saw a couple of concentration camps and uh, they were all that they said they were and more. And I never could understand how people could get that way and so inhuman, you know. So uh, when we won the war, I was elated, of course. Do you think needs to be said about this? Something you need to tell or would like to tell about your experiences? Gee, I don't I haven't anything I can say. Do you have a family What's when that? you came back? Uh, no, I'm, on my first job I went to Saranac Lake and uh, I, I wanted to go skiing again. So, uh, and the secretary in the scout office was my wife, Jean. And so we got married. We have a couple of kids. A boy died at 27 years old, which was sad. And our daughter, uh, Betsy, is in Penyan, New York. She's a program director with the ARC there in Yates County. So. What did you tell her about your experiences? Not much. She's a trip. Typical teenager, she didn't have time for that stuff, <laughs> really. I guess she did, but I show her my photo albums and stuff occasionally. So. Well, we appreciate you talking to us about this. That was a great, that was a great interview. Well, it's my pleasure. And Thank you so much. I'm glad you asked me. We're going to take some shots of those pictures that Okay. You I think I'm these are phenomenal the pictures. Top left. Okay. Hmm. And I'm rolling whatever you'd like to go ahead, sir. All right. Um, this is uh, uh, the guys on the uh, ship ready to go in for the landing. I've just got to ask you. 
Probably not at the point. Should we do that or do we not? Oh, not maybe right. not. Maybe not. Even if you put your hand here, you can even come right around okay. here if that helps. All right. Because uh, then he doesn't really get your hand pointing, but we can see in here with the other. There was. Uh, I'll put this right on you. It doesn't have to. I'll oh. stick it right here. Okay. okay. There you go. You this, can just say that one, one once again. This is a picture from a landing craft. Those are our soldiers getting ready to land. This is. Um, Oh, oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I'll, i got to take yeah. this one at a time. Yeah, he's got to wait until yeah. he can move over and get a nice tight shot of it. This looks like the invasion. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and yeah. whenever you're ready, you can go through it. And this is a picture of the Armada. I had a little instant camera. It wasn't very much roll film, you know. So the pictures aren't very well. but. That's the element C, the Answer stuff. The right weight on the other, the other one, because that's what he was talking about as well. I'll direct. Wait yeah. The, the one to the right of that okay. is the same type of thing, only a little tighter. Which the enemy had uh, built into the beaches to catch the ships and landing crafts. Okay. We just have to wait a second. He's got to get to the next one. And that's one of our uh, landing craft infantry that got hit on the beach there. This is a tank with um, demining apparatus on it that got hit. Oh, that's the, that's the tank with the yeah. demining apparatus. Yeah. Can you, just, can you make a point about the Zeppelins in the air? Yeah. Uh, where do you see them? Up in here, I think, right? Is that where they are? Is that are those Zeppelins? They're on one picture, but that not on that. on this one? It's not on these? Mm. Mr. Carroll, can you just... Or this one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, we've got one here. There was the a little bit for <coughs> me. Yes. Square it up a little bit. There we go. Okay. They had, the, they had these blimps up there on wires that uh, yeah. intercepted diving planes, you know. Mm. Yeah, there's a couple of good ones on this one with the blimps. <coughs> Jeez. All right. Yeah, and then those... Yeah, that's when they're that's about family. covers yeah. that, I guess. I'm not much of a photographer, so. You no, know, these are incredible <laughs> pictures, some of these. But they really are. <laughs> you were at war and you were snapping <laughs> these pictures, you know. <laughs> supposed to be doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> they caught you. <laughs> there you were snapping pictures. They did say no but cameras, right you know. You're not I, the only one. Little who camera. Got pictures. Just the bottom left one. This one, right here. That's that element C. It's railroad uh, rails uh, intercept. The ship's bottom would hit them, you know, coming in. The Germans put those up. Uh, they hit the, bottom of the Navy SEALs had to go in and take those out in the early morning in the dark. They had to go, really, in the dark? They went and got those out of there oh, so yeah. the ships could, so they could go okay. in. Yeah. You gotta just <laughs> I'm telling you, the whole thing just awes me. Just awes me. Some of these are fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's a crane, isn't it? You know what that is? Let me just do this. No. Okay, if you'd like to just describe that one, that'd be all right. Yeah, the uh, upper left is was our job the, during the three or four days of the landings. Uh, that's the GMC ducks we had, which ran uh, to shore and then went up on the beach. Um, they're being loaded from a ship. And the middle one is another loading operation. The, you can see the little GMC ducks at the bottom there waiting for their cargo. The middle one's tougher to get here. Oh, I might have to just kind of look at the top and then tilt down. Cause it's a Over here on the right is the, uh, um, they took old ships and sunk them. Well, I'm, I'm still in the middle yeah, one. Yeah, he's so still, he's, oh, trying, still he's got to frame okay. it up. These are the ducks he was talking about down here on that same picture. Yeah, and they're getting loaded up. As you tilt down, just slowly go to uh, 
We could cut away to that if we needed to and talk about the ducks. They're the being loaded at the bottom. They held uh, 3,000 pounds of cargo, any more, and it began to ship water. <laughs> um, one bad thing about the duck was that you had to stop at the land's edge, the shore's edge, to change from the propeller to the wheels. And you're a sitting duck. Wait, you know, when you stop there. And we lost quite a few of them. Huh. And over to the right. Uh, yeah, the on the right are the ships being sunk to form a, um, you know, to block the sea. And those were old uh, freighters that were sunk there in a line. And that's on the shore when we got the... Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I think that's all right because you're not going to get very much more from that. <coughs> you know what I mean? It's hard to do. I'm trying to get it steady, but it ain't moving. I think it was all right. There was a period of time that was okay from what I could see. Where is it? It is bouncing a lot, isn't it? Is that from me standing here? No, no from this. We're trying to get so finite of a picture that the, right. the lens picks up every little tiny movement. Hmm. Uh, those were the ships being sunk to form a uh, breakwater. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the one right below us? That's uh, when we got the ducks on shore, then we unloaded them with those cranes and uh, put them in trucks or the soldiers came and got the ammunition or whatever it was that we put on shore. And the other one is this one over here, which I think is an incredible shot, the beach. Yeah, that shows uh, the landing craft that was hit on the beach. <clears throat> yeah, look at that. That's, those shots like that are amazing to me. Mm. You have that one? Okay, wait. Let me see it first. Okay. My eyes are what the they are. See there? Oh yeah, this was. Um, oh, you had that coin there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, look uh, at the stormy sea. Yeah. This was uh, approximately a week after the uh, D-Day that a storm lashed the beach. A tremendous hurricane it was, and uh, it threw that landing craft right up on top of the other one. You can see that picture on the lower right. Go to the right and see what the storm did. Looks like you're there. using your arm there. <laughs> that's the one on the bottom. That's okay. He's on the bottom. The bottom, bottom right. right. That one. That, yeah. That's the one on top of the only that's on top of the other. Yeah. Nobody was in the bottom one, I hope. No, I yeah, hope not. <laughs> Well, everybody scurried for their foxholes and waited the storm out. But the upper right is, uh, I think, another storm shot of the beach area. Now we can lose the, 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 the nickel. Lose the nickel. Yeah. I didn't do anything. Just gave you my nickel. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not bad for me. I just <laughs> collect nickels this way. <laughs> that one in the upper uh, right is what again now? That shows a storm that hit the a hurricane on the beach. The two upper pictures are. Then there's a lower left here. Ooh, that's a gun. That's a gun emplacement the Germans had uh, bearing down on the beach, which, of course, was knocked out by our troops. Isn't that an amazing shot? The German gun bearing down our troops. Wow. It's amazing. Hmm. Here's another All one right. similar to that. I think this one up here, right? 
Oh, the one yeah. in the upper left. Yeah. You see the gun there? Yeah, same thing. And these are gun emplacements. We'll tighten up the edges of that. Yeah. Hmm. Now the middle one's interesting. That was you said was the. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's me in there. I'm not sure, but anyway, that's um, inspecting the electrical wiring in the uh, gun emplacement. Where the German soldiers would be. Yeah. Their gun emplacement. Yeah. Let me get that. Nice shot of that handsome young man right there. Yeah. 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 I'm shaking like a leaf. I guess it's going to have to be a static shot. I was going to say, what we'll do is we just do a, a freeze sort of uh, thing. I'm shaking. It's real jittery leaf. today. I'm usually pretty steady. Yeah. Didn't have enough coffee this morning? Is the ground moving? <laughs> I know. You no, know, there are some days that I'm like that too. And I just uh -huh. go to zoom in and, and I'm so, what is wrong? I can't get, you know, just shit. Uh, oh, that's a gentleman sticking his head out of something there. Is that you? Yeah, no, one of the guys, I guess. That's uh, it's part of that emplacement. It's that's amazing. where they could... Uh, they can stick their heads Observatory up. sort of thing. Wow. In the gun emplacements. Jeez. Our soldiers uh, that came before us there on D-Day had to, had to take these They'd places. They clean those out. Boy. Boy. What they had to go through. I mean, you know what I noticed is how, uh, how you all have a great uh, empathy for each other. Uh, I have had so many men here just come and say, yeah, but you know, I was a lucky one. Yeah. Oh, we were to be able to tell about it. Yeah. But those guys that landed there on H hour, it was a, a mess. That's a building that got hit? That was a church at Verville-sur-Mer, and that's the the main... Um, icon or something for Omaha Beach. It was the one thing that stood on the hill, and uh, they had snipers in there. And, uh, we had a battleship back of us, actually, in the water. 16-inch guns, and they raked this place, and they hit the church. <coughs> Every time the guns went off, our ship would come out of the water and go down. <laughs> <laughs> this one has a blimp you see really well a couple of them there. yeah those blimps uh, kept uh, strafing dive bombers away and, uh, I'm in the upper left right now upper left yeah, yeah that's looking down there. on the beach nope upper left yeah, upper left, yeah. Low, that's a low upper left <laughs> it doesn't look no, like it that is the lower left, left. Sorry, lower, lower left, left. Uh -huh. what, what is that one, the lower left? Wait a minute. It's just, that's okay, I'm closer to I'm trying to... Ah, I got it. Can I pick it up a minute? Yep. Let's see what's the darn... It actually looks like it could be Star Wars. We just fly a little plane. <laughs> 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 it's a little spaceship because it's got the that starry look. look. <laughs> Maybe I thought we did it years ago. Well, they that's really did that kind of thing, yeah. It was just looking out on the beach and seeing the ships maneuvering and getting ready to land. All right. mm -hmm. Then up above it, I see the blimp. Yeah, the blimps were left protecting the, the protecting the beach. Yeah. Now, how would they do that? Had a just cable. They had a cable, and um, you know the dive bombers and fighter planes couldn't strafe the place without hitting these cables that hang from the blimp. You follow me? Okay. They were uh, first used in the battle for London in the early days in 39 and 40, where they had hundreds of them. The next one has the, mm -hmm. you, get the you see one it right higher, the yeah, there. yeah, that's the blimp up higher.
know what's amazing is the stamina that you used to have. You had to have that stamina. Three days and three nights. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one, uh, talking about the 12 hour bed all um, at Smith, uh, Smith Beach, this one you have. Yes. That, that number of hours and the exhaustion that must have set in, all I can figure is sheer adrenaline must have kept people going. Must have been, you know. The feet, well, and the, the, the <laughs> tremendous noise all the time. The one on the upper right, right so all the gentlemen in there. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, sorting the materials on the beach and trying to, we take them out of those GMC ducks I was telling you about mm -hmm. and put them in piles and reorganize and clean out debris that had been hit there and stuff. Okay, the one they bought must be something of the same. See oh, it. the guys are hanging guys. out. We like to see the guys. Yeah, there. this is uh, my fellas, my platoon. And uh, they're waiting to find out where to dig their foxholes. <laughs> waiting to go to work. Pictures like that are great, too. You see those? Can recognize anybody there more. you keep in touch with? Uh, no, I don't think so. Go ahead. Mm. Now I know some of those guys too. Uh, uh, the colonels, a lot of them are gone, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Come on out, Deb. How are you? Hi. This is Mr. Russell. Hi. Just like a soldier. <laughs> Just like a soldier. All the way down the hill in the car. <laughs> Not showing up in the car. All the way down the hill in the car. I love it. Oh, I'm. Oh. No, I haven't seen anybody. No, we haven't. Um, what is the Smith Beach one? Oh, this is uh, this is very actually touching. Uh, uh, Lionel Smith was our commander on this landing. He was head of the 5th Engineer Special Brigade, which we were a part of. And he stepped off his landing craft and stepped into the tide there and was killed immediately. And try, trying to lead the troops ashore. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fellows got together and had this sign made wow. by somebody in the armed services and put up right on the beach at Omaha Beach. Easy Red, they call that beach. And that was uh, our first attempt at a graveyard on top, which is now a famous uh, graveyard. I visited there. I, I took my wife over to see, see the reg regimental memorial we put up. We all pitched in and well, and. Um, now it's there's nine thousand graves in it. That's the area they made that. Yeah, right above the beach. Wow. Can't do that. <laughs> well, keep the going. Make keep more money. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, but he he was a great guy. You know so, that has uh, got to be a discouraging thing to have your commander, the commanding officer, hit first. Yeah, yeah. And what do the rest of you do? You just keep doing. Oh yeah, we're highly trained. Everybody's highly trained. Okay. I had, that my father-in-law had talked about some of his experiences before he passed on. And we, what we found was a lot of his photographs. I just want him to get the top secret oh, and the we'll unfold secret. it. Oh, okay. I want to get him a tight, to get a tight shot of that from the map. Because we can take the tight shot of top secret and then we can dissolve into the map itself, wait. Yep. Yeah. So or something like that. Something or something like that. <laughs> you go with the flow around here. <laughs> I'm up to six cents. It's a good way. <laughs> 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 they pay me well for this. <laughs> Nobody knows it better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just do 
Yeah. One yeah. thing is to get, okay. let me just try this before we do anything. Nice. You haven't lost the touch there. Hmm. I'm shaking like a leaf. Okay. That, that was good. Oh, good. Okay. Now let's shaking try. Shaking like a leaf. This is. Big. It's kind of faded over the well, years. Actually, that kind of adds character, I would say, yeah. to the whole thing. I don't know if you can start maybe, <laughs> well, with mm. all the shaking that you're doing, I don't know, but <laughs> if you can kind of start uh, or, or even go from the top secret that we have there uh -huh. and uh, come to the... There's area. my beach, Easy this is Red. Your beach. Easy Red? Yeah, right. Oh, I don't know, maybe you could start with Easy Red. And that church is up church on, is on that over. brow oh, up wow. there. Yeah. Easy Red is your beach. Yeah. And then I'll just kind of... You can see that line of ships that were sunk there. Oh, that's the line of ships? That, that's the way it was supposed to look. This is what we were supposed to get when we landed oh. to build this whole thing. Wow. And, uh, of course, the Germans didn't know what, where he was going to land, where Eisenhower was, might have landed at Calais up the coast, you know, near mm -hmm. Dover or something, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Mm -hmm. So that in the center, this is where the ship should be, this, this thing right Yeah, here. those are the breakwater and uh -huh. kept the sea away. Oh. And we all waited out here, about through here, mm -hmm. and uh, the soldiers were fighting in here. And that was a terrible battle. More than 2,000 dead. So this is where the fighting was taking place in here. Yes. And those are the different areas yeah. of the sea where people are coming in. Yeah. Uh, I'm um, amazed and impressed with the strategies of it, the professional and trained people who do this. It's amazing and how important it's been to our country. They had some, they had some good people. To the world, I mean, to the world, this is just uh -huh. so amazing. Uh, yeah, that was nice. This is what, just an older map of the area. Were you yeah, issued these maps? Yes, we were issued these maps. Um, every platoon leader got a set of the maps. I just saved it. Yeah. This is, uh, Signy. And we're here someplace. <laughs> right here. That's, oh, I put a little X mark. Yeah. That uh, top secret map was right here. That's where the area was yeah. for that map? Yeah. Utah Beach was over there. Mm -hmm. Right where your thumb, finger is. Yep. That was Utah. They landed mostly with paratroopers. And then further along the coast, the rangers went up the cliffs at Point de Ho. Oh, really? Yeah, we could see them from our beach there, way down there. Might show it there. Can we try one more thing? Sure. Yeah, that was nice. That would be a nice one. Mm -hmm. Nice sweeping motion there. Mile of the beach was just incredible. Yeah, the it number was of miles wide. that you had people, soldiers there. And then yeah, they were. And the German divisions were all up in here, and some of them well, um, um, well settled in. Uh, um, one girl of one of the Nazi troopers became a sniper and killed some of our men. And uh, 
Unfortunately, it took care of her. You want me to here? You want me to straighten this out over here? Does that help you, Wade? Well, I've done it a couple times. Yeah. I think I'm all right. I just thought I'd take some random shots yeah. and like just pan or something. Yeah, because panning the coast there is good. As well, he said the uh, the Germans were all dug in a little farther in there. there. Mm. And that red line is N13, and that was the target to get that uh, highway. Oh, that goes wow. straight from Cherbourg to Paris. Oh, wow. So if you had that. Once they cut that, so the Germans couldn't do anything, and they got caught down here. The road was blocked to them, and they were all down in here in Falaise area. And uh, big surrender there. Mm. I was reading about all the, the prisoners. I mean, it was, I was reading about Patton and the number of prisoners that would take all in one time. What the heck do you do with all those men? Yeah. Do, do you, <laughs> what do you do with them? <laughs> Yeah, it does start down there. And 13? Looks to your left. No, it really doesn't go up too much further. Straighten down here a little. How many miles are we talking from there, from the uh, from where you hit the beach into the road? Uh, no, the map, I don't know the, uh, four or five at the most. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't very, it wasn't very far. far. No. To be put together. That's the problem is that you uh, we get we get wonderful pieces from people. But wow, there's a lot going on in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tend to ask about uh, if, if people were aware, if men were aware of what was going on at home, because one of the points of this whole documentary was to also uh, tie it in with the local area, the Mohawk Valley. These people, these men like you, yeah. have saved the world, and they're from the Mohawk Valley. Mm. And so that there's a little bit of time. Well, what is, well, 